All right, Kay. So, hey, thank you for so much for coming in. It's your first time in the Valley. So tell us real quick. So what's been going on over there in Agland? How's uh, fall camp been thus far? Uh, fall camp's gone really well. I think we've just come in with a new focus. You know, we've been working real hard, and it's just been really fun to see and really exciting. Gotcha, gotcha. And so, look, man, we don't, you know, we kind of met you for the first time, obviously, last year. You were a true freshman, and you got thrown in the fire pretty quick. Um, how, how many how many games did you end up starting at towards the end of the year? How many games did you start? Five, five or six, something like that, I believe, because game four was my first one, my first start. Right, right. And um, pretty much, what was your like aha moment, I belong in Division One college football. When did you know that this speed went too fast for you, the game went too big? When did you know that you really, you know, were going to be a player? That's tough to say because I'm hard on myself, but I'm, I think probably, and it was kind of towards the end of it, Rhode Island was when I was okay. like, okay, I can, I can really play with these guys. You know, that's when I had my best game statistic-wise and – Personally, I felt like I had my best game. So, yeah, I probably Rhode Island. I think it's – man, yeah. I got to say, I think it's pretty cool that you mentioned Rhode Island, man. And, and, and if I had to compliment your game and, and give you a compliment in that regard, I would say that it's your ability to get better over time, man. And you speak of that Rhode Island game, I think that's the game you had the big pick, big interception there on the mm. sideline. And, you know, there was a moment earlier in the season where you let one go and you missed one and you probably <laughs> – Wish you had back. So to, to see that evidence yeah. of you working hard, man, and and writing that wrong, and, and and really getting better over time throughout the season, man, I think that's what it really takes to be a great football player. And those are some skills mm -hmm. you possess. I give you kudos for uh, writing that wrong, man, making making that big play against uh, Rhode Island. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, so 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 when, like, say, uh, I guess initially you were were you the backup for uh, BJ Turner? So I was. Kind of, obviously, kind of the backup for Malik and BJ at the time. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. all right. And so this year, I guess, are you going to be kind of pegged in at the, on that weak side linebacker spot? Is that going to be your role? So right now, I'm at the mic. You know, oh, right okay. Now, so I'm at the field. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, if so, is you and Joshua Isaiah pretty much man the inside? Is that going to be the 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 outlook for right so now? Right now, it's um, there's going to be a mix. Definitely, um, I think we're really going to mix him like me, Malik, and then on the strong side, and then the weak side is going to be Mac and Josh. Right now, Mac David and Josh Isaiah. Okay, okay, and and then that now, D line. I'm yeah, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, specifically, uh, at, at that Mike linebacker. Uh, Give give our uh, viewers a uh, 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 just a, a basic description of what you're doing, uh, what what you do, your responsibilities at, at, as the mic. Well, the mic linebacker is mostly you know mostly the run guy. You know, doesn't have as much in the past game as the will, but we're more the uh, vocal, you know, kind of the quarterback of the defense at the mic position. Yeah, and so you got a, I guess, a lot of communication. A lot of responsibility, mm -hmm. making sure the checks are, 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 are understood by everybody involved. Um, was that like an adjustment for you as far as like being vocal leader and taking that sort of role, especially as a freshman? I mean, so not too much of the vocal leader part because, you know, I was uh, I was a two year captain in high school, but it was more the understanding of it. You know, yeah. you know this is a lot more complex of a defense than I ran in high school. So. It was a change. It was a change, but it took me a while to get there. But you know, I feel like we're slowly getting there and getting to where it needs to be. And speaking of that defense, we had your coordinator on a couple months ago, uh, Coach Jay Z, and he explained that this is kind of his 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 baby. This defense. Um, so mm -hmm. tell me when, when you when you I guess when you were being recruited and he was kind of explaining to you what your role was going to be. You know, did you like instantly fall in love with the concept? Or you know, was it was it was it hard to kind of get a grasp for? What, what were your, your what were your? I mean, I was excited. For? Yeah, I mean, so I remember hopping on the Zoom call probably about a month before I got there, and just the initial baseline of it blew my yeah. mind. After the meeting, I, was, I kind of sat there for a second. I was like, "Jeez." <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> Welcome to college football. You know, 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But it was a uh, it was exciting too because you know I'm always up for a challenge. So, but yeah, it was a lot at first. It was. And you you just seem I mean, you got the look of like you seem like a football guy. I mean, I guess in high school, yeah. did you do any other? Did you wrestle or anything, or you just always straight football? Straight football. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, is, is your family you have like a a a, back, a family background in football? Is your your dad and uncles or anybody like that? Well, so my dad played football in high school, but he had he decided to go play at Akron uh, to play baseball because okay. you know he told me the story. Actually, he went and watched. Uh, I think it was Toledo play their spring game because they had just offered him to play football. And he was watching just how big and physical they were. And he said, yeah, I'm not ready for that. So he decided to go play baseball. <laughs> he, had to, he had to make a business decision. <laughs> right. So He made a business decision. <laughs> so, so, so real quick, um, just tell me, how did you even find, get on the radar for a and Who recruited you? And how did their process even take place? So I think probably – I mean, I, I knew of a and and um, I had contacted the coaches a couple times, but nothing really much of it. You know, obviously, y'all had two really great linebackers before I got here. And um, but then when Coach Wash ended up getting, you know, everything happened, and then everyone hit the transfer portal. Uh, Coach Brown ended up texting me, and then uh, you know, two weeks later, I get on campus, and then two days later, I committed. Did you get a lot of interest from a lot, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of other schools and offers and things like that? Oh yeah, I got plenty. I got plenty of interest in all things like that, but man, just come here and, you know, I just, I just felt a love almost, you know, cause like a lot of places on different visits, you kind of just felt a little awkward amongst the, like the team sometimes at first, but you know, they were just real welcoming. So I was like, you know what, why not? Hey, you like hearing that Dougie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kay was one of those guys, man. Like you said, I caught the tail in the conversation, but, I mean, it all happened so fast. He kind of made a decision quick and ended up here. And when I turned on his film and saw all the plays he was making on, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, and then you look up and he's running touchdowns on the offensive side of the ball. You're like, man, that kid's got some versatility. Um, other than your versatility, Kay, what would you say some of your attributes are that makes your game um, complete and makes you who you are as a football player? Um especially at the mic spot, you know, um, that my IQ of the game, you know, I don't like to say too much about stuff like that, but I feel like, cause I kind of pride myself on being a film guy and knowing the defense as well as in, I know the back of my hand. So I'm really big on IQ. Yeah, and I told, I told these guys, man, that uh, when, when you sign, man, that we consider you one of those guys as, you know, one of those guys who are the face of the program, right? We said that the profile of the a student athlete was changing and evolving, and, and and we want to have more guys like you that were well-rounded, uh, checked a lot of the boxes, and to hear you speak of, you know, your approach to the game and, and how cerebral you, you'd like to be in terms of uh, dissecting plays and information, man, that's huge. That's, uh, attributes like that rub off on your teammates, man, so keep being a leader, um, you know, on and off the field, because I we one thing we do is we observe and we see the players, man, and Aggies are always watching, and every time we've seen you uh, in a public sector or a public setting um, at the athletic banquet man you were sharp well put together and you can tell that you're a leader amongst uh, your teammates i appreciate that so okay we you know you always hear stories of guys like luke keekley who just can like dissect the play before everybody else in the whole stadium like how how much how much film and do you watch i guess during the weekend like how, how, give us an idea of some of your preparation or how you kind of this this master your craft. Well, obviously you get the uh, you get the game like the breakdown from your coaches. You know at the beginning of every game week, so you know you have a baseline to look at. Then you just start watching. You know little tendencies, looking for things that give you just the slightest of an edge. Uh, you know splits, uh, uh, down distances, things like that. So it's just little things. Right. And so have you guys already start like game planning for Wake Forest yet? Or is that next week? Uh yes, sir. Yes, already. Sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So so don't give away any secrets now. We don't want to know any, <laughs> no, any, no, no, any no, no, no. Don't give away any secrets. But I mean, have there's any has there been anything on film? You don't have to say specifically what, but have there been anything on film that you think you guys are gonna have an opportunity to attack next Thursday night? I believe so. I believe so, hundred percent. Good deal, good deal. 100%. Yes, sir. 
Craig, got anything else you want to throw at uh, K-Way too? No, uh, just to say, I'm glad to have you here at, uh, at A&T and uh, uh, watch you all last year, the way you developed. Uh, and you're right. Uh, I think you came into your own in, in Rhode Island. And uh, uh, I believe uh, this year with all the added responsibility, uh, being a soft, just a sophomore, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of butterflies. And what do you do before uh, a game, uh, right at game time? A lot of guys will sit in the locker room with their headsets on. Some guys, you know, punch mm-hmm. lockers or whatever. What, what, <laughs> what is your uh, pregame routine? Well, I'm a little more calmer than punching lockers. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my, uh, my high school head coach actually was a big into breath work. So we, he used to teach us how to calm ourselves using the diaphragm and breathing. So I'll have my headphones on, I'll just close my eyes and just breathe, you know, just try to calm myself, calm my nerves. Because obviously you're going to be nervous. There's no getting around it. It's football. How could you not be? So, so usually they say, like, you, you, you stay with those butterflies until the first hit, and then, then you start playing football. Is that, is that pretty much how mm-hmm. it works for you too? 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just, yeah. You're yeah. looking to make first contact. All right, so look, let me ask you this then, Kate. Who, in your opinion, because you've been here now, this is your, going on to your second year, um, who on that Blue Death defense is the hardest hitter? Who on your team do you think lays the lumber the, the hardest? Including yourself. If you, want, if you want to put yourself yeah. in there, you can. But who who who's yeah. the hard hitter on the team? Yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Mac. Uh, Mac David? Really? Ooh, okay. He, yeah, yeah. He he's he can come downhill. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So who who yeah. who is um what we call the first off the bus guy? Which guy looks the best? Like this coming off, uh, you know, in his uniform that makes the like the other player. Oh man, we gotta face this guy. You know. So who who's one of those guys? You know, I like to put myself on that board. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> other other than me. Uh, Probably, um, I'd say Josh. Probably Josh. Yeah, I, say Josh. Josh. I was gonna yeah. go with Josh. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Doug. The, the Doug. Part, the, who the, who's one of your teammates? Who, who who filled that who filled that bill? Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, you get thirty three is, is in that number. You got to go with two shot Herb Dixon when he was there. Right. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thirty three. But you yeah. got you got yeah. Ricky the Rock Lewis. I mean Rick, Ricky Lewis, uh, Shamar Milton, all those guys, man. That was some big guys, man. And they looked apart the working yeah. in the weight room, and you know, so you know, I, you know, it's tough keeping up with those guys. So those guys are still in great shape and and, and throwing weight around. So um, you know, it starts in the weight room, and I see those guys putting in the work. So um, you know, in terms of this year and last year, what's one area of your game that you think? You've worked hard to improve in. I mean, I know you get everybody's working in the weight room and getting bigger, faster, stronger. What's the, what's one area that you you pride yourself on improving um, from last year um, up to the present? Or you want to you make or really want to make an impact on this year? Yeah, what I really wanted to make an impact on coming in was definitely just my IQ. You know, I like to say I pride myself on a high IQ, but I felt like last year I wasn't in some of the places I could have been or needed to be to make bigger plays. So you know, really. Really, you know, studying the game of football and learning the defense and understanding fits and schemes and all that, you know, I've really been working on that this offseason. And so what what is your weight right now? Are you, are you still like going 220? Or? I'm 235 right now. Well, okay, so they got to update the website then because they got you listed, I think, at like 220 <laughs> yeah. or something. So and, and, and that's the and that's one of the things that the fan base has been keep talking about. We were like kind of worried, mm-hmm. like, man, are we going to be big enough? So uh, I, I know you guys been working out and, and, and putting on that mask. So you're you're now yeah. two thirty five. Is that pretty much your ideal? Because you're still what six foot six one. Yeah, six foot six foot six foot and a half. Okay, you know, okay, I, right. So 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 that five eleven three quarters is that, is that the real uh, height? height? Nah, nah, nah. I'm six <laughs> foot flat. I'm, what's it called? Seventy two inches. Okay, I'm, I'm in here. They gave me the six foot. You know, I'll take it. All right, because I'm gonna see, That's I'm gonna it. see you at Fun Fest. Don't make me come out with the measuring tape. Don't make me come out with the measuring tape. And, hey man, and, you have to, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so you're six, so you're six foot and a half, 
and you're 235 now. Is that so you think you should just stay there for the rest of your playing career, or do you want to even get a little yeah. even bigger? I, I felt my – I like myself at 235. You know, I kind of tinkered with it during the spring. You know, I got up to about 240-ish and just didn't like wow. how I felt, so I came down yep. a little bit, kind of found that medium ground. and Yeah. You guys, you guys have some new staff, uh, support staff members – in the program, right? Mm-hmm. Don't you uh, have a, a young lady who's doing nutrition for you now? Oh, yeah, Miss Tamika. Okay. Yeah, Miss this- yeah, Tamika. And talk about a little bit about what she does and how she's helped impact the program. I mean, she does a great job. You know, she gets off, gets us the right snacks and things for lifts, um, the right shakes for after, and then just kind of educates us on what we need to do outside of the weight room and what we need to be having on our plates and things like that. So, and hydration wise, she's awesome in that. And so she's done a really great job. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. And then of course, you know, right now it's such a crazy landscape around the NCAA. Uh, you got all these, <laughs> these new guidelines coming in here. You got conference affiliations changing left and right. And of course, Dougie, we, we got this thing, this monster called NIL. Um, as a, as a player, as a current player, is that like distracting for you? This, when all this stuff's going on and you see this, this one guy across the country is making $250,000 and you know, like how, how do you guys just stay focused on mm-hmm. the main thing with all that swirling around? I mean, I could see how some people could let it get away, but you know, I just love football and you know, I didn't come to college thinking I was going to make a bunch of money. You know, I came to college thinking I was going to be able to play the sport I love. So, you know. That's just how I stay focused. And, and there is, you know, Doug Craig, there is this, uh, you know, the reality of it is A&T is involved with the NIL, um, with the, the, the new NIL rules. And there's a, a collective they just, I guess, announced in uh, some some um, ways that corporate sponsors can get in touch with you guys. Do you, did, did they kind of some some details on on how to uh, navigate the NIL world? What did, what does the university kind of tell you guys about NIL? So, you know, we get, we talked to compliance about NIL and how we have to go through them, but I really haven't, other than that, haven't heard much about the collective and things like that. Like I know we have it open now, yeah. but you know, just haven't heard too much from the university about it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Hey, Dougie, once, once the <laughs> season starts and he starts knocking, knocking people's uh, helmets off, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of folks who's who's uh, interested in uh, attaching their brand to Kate Maldor because uh, I think you're going to be a household name pretty soon. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. And, hey, and, you're uh, already a household name in the Brown household, Kate. Uh, we, we're, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we already said you got the, you got the coolest name on the team. I, I'll go ahead and put that out there. I think Kate Maldor is probably the coolest name on the team, right? I like that. I like yeah, that. I like working that. on that nickname I like that. somewhere in between. <laughs> Cade, Cade Mad Dog Molador, or we got a Cade the Matador Molador. The no, no, you don't. You don't want to call a defensive a player a Matador. They don't. You don't want that. <laughs> they don't want that as a word, man. If he's, if he's shedding off, he's shedding off uh, tackle, I mean blockers. If he is avoiding blockers, making tackles, I'm all for it. You know, hey, oh late. Nah, no, no, don't relate nothing to Kane. Don't listen to this guy. He's an offensive. Hey, he's a wide receiver, and he he ain't like the stop block. Yeah, he's he like the, wide he receiver like the, guy. He like the stop. He ain't like the stop hey, block. Hey, hey, so, hey, so, hey! So, so, so. I, I did. Oh, I'm gonna have to. All right, all right. I'm gonna have to fact check him on the stop blocking part. Nah, he was he was he was a complete player. He was a complete player. Hey, so Kane, tell me this though. I know last year was rough. You know the, the um, team finished one and ten. Mm-hmm. You're in a lot of games, yeah. and you know, kind of a few of them slipped through your fingers, but it seems like that fan support has still been just unrelenting. And you saw that kind of this all season when uh, season ticket sales went through the roof, and then even when homecoming Jiho tickets became available to the public, those were sold out in like 12 hours. So, what was your mm-hmm. what are the players thinking when they see how much support? That the fan community is 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 rallying behind you guys, even though last season didn't go so well. I um, mean, it's it's encouraging to say the least. Um, to know you have someone behind you even after these tough times, man. It's just how you know the real fans. Yeah, you know, it's exciting. It's really exciting. 
So look, man, we don't want to keep you up too late because I know you got prepared for for uh, a big week, opening week next next Thursday. Um, give us give us a little don't like I say don't tell don't tell any of the main secrets, but just give us an idea. What can we expect from that Blue Death defense next week in Winston Salem against Wake Forest? What you know, if we close our eyes. What what, what can we envision? But we're going to obviously, you know, as Blue Death defense of the past, we're going to come hard. We're going to be physical. You know, we're going to execute in every facet of the game, and uh, we're going to dominate. I believe it, man. Hey, I saw the little um, – <laughs> hey, hey, Craig, did you see that little promo they put out there on social media? Yeah. And they said, wait for, us on the, wait for us on the clock. So these guys are not scared. I can tell you that right now. These not. guys have, have no fear. Mm-mm. Can't. So, um, is there yeah. anything else you want us to know before we let you go? Anything you want to promote or anything like that? You know, uh, obviously, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, only reason I'm here. Um, that's number one. And uh, appreciate y'all having me on here, man. It's a, it's a real honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And like I said, I'll, I'll probably be around campus on Saturday for the Fun Fest. I'm not sure if uh, I know Craig might be kind of busy getting that uh, picnic prepared. For the, um, yeah, you get all that food, yeah, all that food cook, and then <laughs> D- Doug might have a schedule conflict, but so some, somebody from Blue Death will be there, and uh, mm-hmm. I um definitely gonna be in Winston Salem next Thursday. So uh, until then, man, you guys, uh, you take care, and we'll see you next time, buddy. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good night. Are right, you too? All right, Thanks. take care. Man.